Welcome back, I'm Shad. So today we're gonna to talk about five of the tips that I have for you to avoid a painful kitchen remodel. There are a lot of different things you can do to avoid mistakes. I'm just gonna cover five today that I think are some of the biggest concerns and problems that I've seen. Be careful on a large scale kitchen remodel trying to do the work all on your own. Now, I come from this industry. I've got 29 years of experience in this industry. It's still really difficult for my wife to live through one of those, and we've done three or four of them in our, our, our marriage. Be careful thinking that even though you know how, that you've got the time, you've got the energy, right, and resources. So hire a contractor who knows what they're doing. You can be a general if you want and hire the subs. In my opinion, it's always good, and I mentioned this in a previous video too, to have a professional um, involved in your project to some degree, whether that's the contractor, whether it's a designer, whether it's a trade. No matter what, it's always good to get another perspective and not just friends and family and neighbors. One thing a general contractor or a remodel contractor can bring to the table that you might not um, is their connections with the trades, the responsibility that they have for safety. Uh, like my wife says, the speed of the workmanship getting done. Second tip, one of my most important tips in doing a kitchen remodel, make sure that you don't start tearing everything out of the kitchen until you have as much of the new materials on site and verified that it's in good condition and the correct product. I've had plenty of clients who get really excited to get their kitchen remodel started. They grab their hammers, they grab their drill gun, they start taking the materials out of the kitchen. Now you have a non-functioning kitchen. When you're dealing with your own kitchen, it's the only kitchen you've got, um, your downtime is gonna be a minimum of two to three weeks in an average kitchen remodel from the, even if you have everything on site, you hurry and put it in, but it could be months and months and months, and I've heard and, and dealt with some nightmare stories because people jump too early. I always hate coming into those situations because no matter what, I'm not usually very much a good guy. Uh, if they've torn everything out and said, hey, can we start planning our new kitchen now? That's a really scary situation to be in. One of the products that you won't be able to have on location um, will be your countertops in most cases. They have to come and template those after the cabinets are in, and then they manufacture or fabricate the countertops and then bring them and put them in you know, sometime later. All right, tip number three. Um, keep your walkways 36 to 60 inches. Now, some people think, yeah, but I have a big, luxurious home. I've got a five to $10 million home. I want a lot of space. I want a lot of people interacting in the space. Here's the thing to think about though. If you have a, a seven or eight foot walkway space, it doesn't make it very convenient for just the simple use of the kitchen. We've talked some, some kitchen layouts in the past. I'll probably spend some more time in depth on kitchen layouts in the future. But just make sure that your spacing is, is not too far and it's not too close. 36 inches is about as tight as I would go. Number four, your colors that you're gonna choose in your space. We're talking paint colors, cabinet colors, appliance colors, you know, your, your faucets and handles and, and whatever else you're doing, your paint color, flooring. Those colors are best chosen in the type of lighting that you're going to have in your space when you're done. So let's just say for instance, that your ambient lighting, which is your general room lighting, let's say that that lighting is gonna be LED, okay? And it's gonna be a certain Kelvin or a certain, you know, um, warmth, right, or coolness. Find whatever that is, and then when you're choosing your materials, your cabinets, your, you know, all those materials, uh, countertops, you're putting all those materials under that lighting. I promise you, you won't be as surprised as somebody who does a sander incandescent lighting or fluorescent lighting in a showroom. And then they go to their home under that LED warm lighting and find that it doesn't look very good at all. Fifth tip is countertop heights. I always recommend to have at least two countertop heights. Why? Well, even if you're one user, sometimes you have different ways you want to use your countertop, okay? So sometimes if you're just gen use, doing general preparation, um, you know, one height can be fine. But every once in a while when you're getting into um, baking or uh, preparing a meal, you might actually want a lower countertop where you can put your shoulders into whatever you're doing, okay? But if you have two users or more, um, oftentimes hardly ever are the users both the same height. We've talked briefly about this in a previous video. That's an emphasis to consider, um, whether you're talking about the seating in the, in the island that can be used for dual purposes, for seating and for 
taller users for general prep, um, or you might have a lower baking area that's just intended for, say, a lower height user or for baking or preparation, maybe baking bread or something like that. Okay, so that's the five tips. Hope it'll save you a lot of pain, and I hope you come back. If you like the video, by the way, please, you know what to do. Subscribe and like below. Give us any comments, any, any feedback um, that you can give would be great, and, and come and watch more videos. Thanks for watching.